I have too many projects. This makes it easy for me and probably you as well to lose track of what's going on. So today I am going to address the state of the fleet. Please hold your applause. I have too many vehicles, most of which are projects, actually all of which are projects. This has led to two issues. One, I'm kind of overwhelmed. I'm having trouble getting traction on any one project because there are so many other things to deal with. This is exacerbated by the fact that I have the ADHD of a four-year-old on cocaine. Look, a shiny thing. I'll get halfway through a build on that project before losing interest and completely changing my direction. Another issue is that all of this stuff is real expensive. Don't get me wrong, this job is awesome. I make goofy things and then I make dumb videos about those goofy things. There is a not insignificant portion of my income that comes from dick jokes. But it is all expensive, and because of this, I will probably be reducing the size of my project fleet by one or two vehicles. Speaking of money, this part of the video originally had a sponsor. I'm not gonna say who, but in the creation of the ad, it sort of became clear that I couldn't both be honest with the viewers and meet the requirements of the ad copy. I tend to be more critical about ads than a lot of YouTubers, which on the one hand means less money, but on the other hand, I don't have to lie to 200,000 people, which is nice. But I do have Patreon supporters to help keep the channel and the projects going, and I greatly appreciate that support. If that's you, thank you. And if you're not a patron supporter, but you do love the channel, consider joining. We have stickers and posters going out this week and new stickers coming soon. Also, you get the videos early. If every person who watched every one of my videos gave $1 a month, I'd have the funds to weld a Ford GT to a Raptor chassis. Something to think about. Anyway, let's talk about motorcycles. This was one of my first videos, how to double the size of the engine in your Grom. Basically, you buy two motorcycles and make them into one. It costs as much as two bikes, and frankly, riding this thing over 65 miles per hour is pretty sketchy, but it is way more fun with a larger engine. This vehicle is definitely on the chopping block. I haven't ridden it in well over a year. In fact, I haven't really tuned it since I swapped in the new ECU. It has the newer micro squirt. That's why there's a board strapped to the handlebars. It's so I can put my laptop on there, ride it around, and use the computer to automatically tune it. As soon as I get that done, this bike will be for sale. But given my current rate of working on this bike, it could be a few decades. No, but really, I do need to sell this. I did just buy a new battery for it since the old one was dead. I'm definitely going to lose money on this since you basically have to buy two motorcycles to make this happen. But it will be happier in somebody else's garage where it will be ridden and enjoyed. Ah, the forerunner, the workhorse of the fleet, the daily driver and off-roader and work truck. The only vehicle I have that is even remotely normal. I love this thing, and I will never sell it. Until Toyota makes a new one, which is rumored to be another year or so. I probably won't buy a new one, because that sounds expensive, but I would love to slide Toyota 50 grand and just drive a 6th gen forerunner until I die. But I would never say that with an earshot of my forerunner. It is my one and only, my beloved, my life partner. It's also paid off, unlike a new 4Runner, so I probably will actually drive this thing for another 100,000 miles. Which it's probably capable of, even considering the way I drive it. After swapping out literally every suspension piece on this truck, I have some clunking noises while driving. One of them, I think, is the front anti-roll bar. I get a popping noise at high articulation. I'm not too worried about this. I am a little worried about a clunking noise I have that seems to be in either the drive shafts or the differentials. And I do need to take off the skid plates and start checking fasteners and slop. I had a leak in the front of this a while ago that I thought was an oil leak, but it turned out to be the front differential had a bunch of loose bolts, which I guess happens after 180,000 miles. There are some other things, like my front light mount broke, I lost a fog light, and my backup camera doesn't work, and not because I took it off with a spare tire to get a new motorcycle home. It does need some work, but it always needs some work. This thing is limping along like a three-legged dog that will never die. I recently got this car out of its parking spot next to the house, and it was dirty. Cobwebs and dust and a huge oil puddle beneath it that kind of looks like it has cottage cheese in it. Yummy. I like to pride myself on the fact that even though I own several questionable vehicles, none of them leak oil. Except the S600, which was fantastic at not leaking oil until I added the dry sump, and now it pees oil everywhere it goes. The dry sump system has several junctions, tubes, and AN fittings, and PT fittings. I'm pretty sure my oil tank is leaking in a couple of places. I originally added this dry sump system because I blew an engine at a racetrack with a lot of high G sustained turns, but I think it's overkill. 
Most people who have motorcycle engines in race cars just overfill the oil or some of them use an oil accumulator. I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to rip out all of this dry sump system and go back to a regular oil system and possibly an accumulator. Every time I add complexity to this car, it gets worse. This car is great because it's so simple, and I think I'm going to go back to that simplicity. I say I think like I haven't already started doing it. I still had the old oil pan, so I measured and marked it with the help of a laser, cut it and leveled it flat, and welded on a patch plate. This is magnesium, you can tell because it says mag right there. I had to do this because the pan is too tall, the engine is already sticking out of the hood, so the pan needs to be shorter. Magnesium welds pretty much like aluminum. Mag is pretty flammable and kind of hard to extinguish, and I'm honestly not entirely sure why you can weld it without it bursting into flames, but I've done this three times now without issue. Your mileage may vary. I'll finish this up at some point. I also need to take it to the dyno and get a good tune on it. It's not bad right now, but it could be better. I love this car. I don't drive it enough, but it is great, and I am never selling it. The last time I took it out was a few weeks ago when Honda had their first cruise in at their North American headquarters. I showed up 30 minutes early and ended up waiting in line for over an hour and a half. Lots of people were just cutting in line, which didn't help. When I got to the front, they told me to park in spectator parking with an S600, Honda's first production car, at Honda's headquarters. There were two S600s there, and the other one was in the museum. I snuck the car into the show area anyway, but it was still a little disappointing that the Honda gets so much more love at the Porsche Cruise Inn than the one at Honda. Never, ever, ever take a naked vehicle to the salt flats when it's wet. Salt got everywhere. I've cleaned this thing eight times and I'm still finding salt. Everything is rusted. The salt flats are crazy. I had tools that never left the RV that returned rusted. I've disassembled parts of this car and I think I'm gonna have to fully disassemble it soon. I'm in the process of moving the electronics from under the seat into a sealed project box in the engine compartment. I will need to have fresh air pumped into this area while the car is idling, but I should do that anyway. I know it looks like it's forgotten under this bench, but it is on rollers. It pretty easily slides out to work on it. I found out a few shortcomings of this car at Bonneville. I was using ceramic front bearings and they did not do well with all the salty water. Even just a tiny bit of corrosion inside causes them to run really rough. They are sealed, but not sealed enough. I ditched these for some regular roller bearings. This will give me a little bit of extra drag in the front, but I think it's worth the extra reliability. If I run next year and find myself one or two miles per hour off the record, then I'll reassess these as options. Another issue, my sprocket carrier walked to the left a little bit. I cleaned this up and painted it so it's a little hard to see, but you can kind of see where the Allen head bolts dug into the aluminum carrier. So that has spacers now. Other than that, this car needs two things. One, a body, and two, new front suspension, or more specifically, no front suspension. I was having steering issues up front caused in part by the front suspension, and wheel travel is going to cause some extra drag with frontal area. I think the benefit I get from no suspension outweighs the drawbacks, so I'm going to ditch it. And with it, some of the complexity of the steering system. I also need a body, and that is actually progressing. I've done a lot of CFD analyses on the body using AirShaper, and I've found out some really interesting things that I will go into in a future video all about that. The trailer for the land speed car also needs some love. I bought a new axle that I was going to mount with a swing arm air suspension so I can lower the rear end. Although I am considering building a trailer or possibly modifying this one to be kind of like the ones the Nebulous Theorem cars use, where you park under it and hoist it up. But I have too many projects, and that is another project. Somebody save me from all of these projects. Ah, the Jag. The forgotten project. It's not really forgotten, it's just temporarily trapped by a pile of Dodge Viper parts. I did change out the door cards and make a new rear seat a few months ago, and also the dash. It's a nice dash. Next up on this is to adjust the front suspension. It has almost no caster, so the wheels don't really want to go back to center while you're turning. I added adjustability for this, so it should be pretty easy. I also need to swap out the front shocks. I have these Ride Tech shock waves, and I need to go to the smaller style up front. There's not a lot of weight on the front axle, so the spring rate is too high with the larger ones. I also want to swap in a quieter air compressor, but this is not really a need, so it's kind of low on the priority list. The gauges are currently not reading anything. I'd like to throw some servo motors behind there to read out speed and state of charge. It also needs some trim pieces and a new headliner, although I might just fix the current headliner. I might sell this car. It needs a few things done to it, and I do love it, but frankly, I have too many projects and too many vehicles. I really wanted to make this a car I would daily drive around, but I'm just not going to. It's never going to be a daily driver. It doesn't have AC or heat or defrost or any of the creature comforts, and even if I added those, the visibility is bad, and it has all the crash safety of a shopping cart. It is an awesome car to take out on the weekend and to take to a car show, but I already have one of those, and I'm about to have a second, so the Jag might be finding a new home.
I don't know. I need to get some work done on it first, and I might change my mind as I work on it. Also, I have no idea how much this car is worth. Like, no idea. 32 British pounds? I have no idea. Oh, this thing. I promised myself this would not become a project, but it has all the problems of a crappy house and all the problems of a crappy car all rolled into one. I had one of the air suspension hoses leak while we were in Bonneville, and now the other side is leaking, so I need to fix that. The engine was throwing up a convocation of codes, but that has subsided down into one persistent code about the oxygen sensor. I left the powered rearview mirror on, which killed the battery. Anyway, that about sums up the to-do list. Except for all of these things. This car. This stupid car. Let's just forget about this car. Ah, the Viper. The best of all the cars and all the projects. The newest, shiniest, Americanist thing. This has a lot of work left to do on it. I originally wanted it done in time for SEMA 2023, which is last week. Maybe SEMA 2024. The big thing here to do is the front and rear bumpers and the rock sliders slash exhaust covers. I'm currently working on the front bumper, which is why it looks like the Viper barfed up its front end. Actually, the thing I need to do next on the Viper is sit down and write down all of the next things that need to happen. I need to add coolant, put the rear shocks back in, take the front shocks out so I can clearance the front to get the bigger tires working, bleed the brakes, remove this gate shifter that kind of sucks and put in a new short throw shifter. Lots of other things. I don't really need to update where I'm at on this. The Viper is kind of the king of projects right now. If you want to know where it's at, watch the last five or six episodes. I'm basically barely past oil pan. I haven't talked about this one much, but it has been taking up space in my garage for several years. I started to build this giant scooter and then kind of stalled on the project. I started this one pre-pandemic. It's old, from the before times. It's supposed to be a Razor scooter, but 10 feet long. One of these days, I'm just going to block out a couple of weeks and finish this thing. But this is not that week. I think I will actually finish the scooter. Maybe next month. Anyway, that is the state of the fleet. I really need to wrap up some of these projects. Definitely the scooter. Also the Jag. Certainly the Grom. I've been picking up a new project near the beginning of the year for a few years now, but I think next year is going to be the year of finishing projects I already have. Or maybe I'll build an airplane. <laughs>